Today we will be reviewing which G bosses we think might end up being good in history collection. Now to be honest, we haven't tried all the decks, so some of this is in theory. You are free to challenge us and educate on anything we overlooked because I am sure there will be plenty of it. I want to take this moment to invite a couple special guests of honor. Now he isn't a president. I made sure to avert that timeline. I would like to welcome Bernard Sanders. Thank you, Barack. I am pleased to be with you all today. Let me be clear, this tier list is fluid and we may rethink this based on unforeseen factors. We are always listening to the concerns of the viewers and we will make sure it reflects what the people think as that is vital to a healthy and functioning democracy that isn't run by the 1%. So glad to have you here with us, Bernie. I am sure with you we can finally have a broader discussion. I managed to avoid talking to you for years thanks to the DNC rigging, but here we are the first time. Tremendous. The feeling isn't mutual, former president. Next, let me introduce to you the newly crowned King of the United Kingdom, His Majesty King Charles III. It is an honor to be taking part in a historical moment with history collection discussions. Oh my God, it's Charlie. I love you, Charlie. How are you doing, old friend? Did you see my interview where I was telling the world how awful your son is? I think you will do a fantastic job as the king. Your mother will be proud. Just don't talk about the climate, okay? Or people will think you are a bit woke. Mr. Trump, this is rather inappropriate. I know your brother, too. We used to go to Jeffrey's Island together before he was arrested. How is Andy doing? I hear he looks after the Queen's doggos. Goodness heavens, can we just get on with this? Barack, maybe consult me before we invite people in next time. This video is already starting off bad. I'm sorry, Joe. I really wanted to shake things up a bit, so it isn't just the same old three. Well, Barack, would you like to start things off? Gracefully, Your Majesty. Starting with the United Sanctuary, a nation which symbolizes our shared values, God, angels, knights, nobles. But in all that, there is a commoner that ascended to a high rank in the knighthood. What have you all noticed with Sir Altmile? Gablade is a promising unit, and you can call attack extenders while making use of the additional force markers, but it isn't the best for pressure. The on-stride ability doesn't feel great. I agree, though to be fair, the multi-attack is pretty good. By second stride, you could do some powered up attacks with the later game strides, and you could also play Aerial Divine Knight to generate the third force. The only problem is the defense will probably suck, so they might die quick to a Schlishma or Galley combo. I do fear that perhaps the defense in the deck may not be resilient after that turn leading up to Aerial Divine Knight. I think we are all in agreement. I suppose we put this in mid. Next, let us discuss Kieran. Unlike Gablade, Kieran can help you survive the opponent's next turn better. It isn't very good at dealing pressure. It is worth noting Kieran can help set up a turn four guard restrict play. They also have good early game pressure cards. Suzanu having a good draw ability helps it too. It aged well. I agree, Suzanu is quite remarkable. Amaterasu and Kuroi Kazuchi providing reliable critical pressure can also help force nuisance guardians from the hand sooner. I think it is fair to put this under the good section. Next is Claret Sword. Trash, you call a grade one weak. They did my guy Kanzaki so dirty it is sinful. Also, it is a turn I can't use Helheim. This is true. It is very rare to see Trump speak truth, but this is truly the case, mediocre. However, if you live long enough to turn four, I imagine Helheim would be good. Until they guard with an over-trigger or blitz order, in which case no superior call. So we can rate this bad. Now it is Fenrir time. Unbend Taro and we can talk. I would rather play with my regalia than play a card fight with these. For real, regalia is a good deck. No, not that regalia, I mean my royal treasures. That was meant to be an insult. Because playing with treasures is rather dull compared to playing with cards. Oh, I see. Nice one, Your Majesty. It is a pretty poor ability. You can multi-attack just like with many previously discussed, but that is all. You have to give up on V-Series, which has a good defensive skill, meaning that you might die the next turn before reaching turn four. The American people do not have time for turn four when the defense is redistributed to the top 1% of decks in the format. That said, Dion is a good stride to have to find a quality guardian. I agree, Lading and Gleipnir are nice and all, but maybe not enough. The Harmonics Messiah guardian could worsen the situation, maybe high bad. Time to move to the next segment, Angel Feathers are my wings. Uriel can multi-attack, but I guess that doesn't mean much nowadays. Angel Feather is quite good. It can guarantee health care, which is important for living through a game. Healing is bad. Nobody needs to heal. Raphael and all those cards should be removed. Just like when I wanted to remove Obamacare. Fuck you, Donald. 
Donald, I will do everything in my power to support President Biden in securing a second term so that Raphael doesn't end up on your stupid ban list. Thanks, Bernie. Donald, we are going to beat your ass next election, just like we did in card games. Keep dreaming, Sleepy Joe. Well, just like how flawed our health care system is, so is Angel Feather. So I think we rate this as bad. Broken Heart and Gavrail being activated fast is nice and all. But how important is that, really? Next up, Gold Paladin. When there is large wealth and income inequality with large amounts going to the top, in the United Sanctuary, you get Gold Paladin. Gurgit is very good. Agree. Gurgit's armor is about as golden as my toilet, best card. You have a golden toilet? That is kind of weird. You are just jealous of my success. How did this talk about Gold Paladin turn into one about toilets? Yeah, Gold's is looking pretty good. Gurgit has a usable GB2 as well. Did you guys already see Gurgit topped recently? Oh boy, another infinite loop. What a clever player. He's flexing so hard and this set isn't even out yet. Tremendous. Gurgit is remarkable in history collection. Two Axel markers to draw two, an on-stride bonus on top, but also a solid multi-attack extender while being able to play Percival and have the best GB2 with an easy-to-manage cost. Most GB2 are unplayable since they require giving up on stride, but not Gurgit. This is among the best. I concur. Gurgit is a splendid and fortuitous card. Efficient is the best way to describe it, and all by chance. He has been blessed by our Lord in the skies. Compelling argument, Senator Sanders, and thank you for your insights, King Charles. At the top you go, Gurgit. Let's move on to Dragon Empire. What do you think about Kagero and Blademaster with Mahmoud? Does it make any difference? Overlord best deck? What is Blademaster even doing besides retiring? Overlord remains the 1%. Oh, heavens, not you too, Bernie. Barack, Blademaster sucks. Get over it. Oh, whatever. Fine, bad tier. Let us cover Narukami then. Broken. They banned full Bronto for this. Also, now it's easier to activate Impede Dragon since you don't need the opponent riding up anymore. I believe Narukami is high tier. Zorus, along with Vanquisher, is quite good at ensuring a bind zone exists. It is also worthy of mention that Vanquisher benefits a great deal in ways Eradicator couldn't, because the ride-up is so useful. I do wonder if Vanquisher may become the front-runner for the Narukami clan after this set. Okay, then we have Tachikaze next. What do they even do? I have no idea. I spent the past three years playing Vanguard Zero only to see a clan I barely recognize. I think we have no idea on this one. The real scary cards are Nabiros, so maybe this counts as bad, too. I'm afraid I lack the expertise on Tachikaze. But that being said, I do want to clarify to our viewers that we don't really know what we are talking about, and could very well be wrong on a lot of these rankings. It is really why I am not personally a supporter of tier lists and see it as mere clickbait, yeah. Your Majesty, you weren't supposed to say that. Just like how you have to sell the myth of the monarchy as the divine chosen, we have to sell the myth of tier lists having any intellectual weight to them to stay relevant. Anyway, low tier it is. Oh boy, I think we are going to get some angry Jurassic Park fans in the comments soon. Next we have Murakumo. Top tier. You can spam so many attacks with that train. They brought back Nui Dayo with this one. We all remember the terror of Nui Dayo. If a deck can do something like that, then perhaps we are in trouble. I don't know, guys. I think this is all an exaggeration. Has anybody actually tested? It is broken. Let's put it at top. Uh, whatever. Next is Nubatama. Oh, no, discard one. What am I going to do? Play Dominate instead of this shit, maybe. This stride feels wasteful, but you could maybe search this out so that you can still get GB and set up Rina. Remember, Rina is usable in any Nubatama deck. It will be easier to live into that turn, too, with double protect. You know what, Bernie has a point. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe you can just mix this as an engine. It certainly doesn't hold up as its own deck, though. Okay, so we put it as mid. Now we move on to Dark Zone. Gear Chronicle. Cancer. Toxic. The on hit is weak, but the TikTok Melum engine is something, though going into Jet does mean Alul and Elul are useless. But two Force Markers is great. That said, there is no Schlishma on that turn, which adds tons of pressure, so you probably can survive the stride more easily. Plus, Steam Maiden Engine makes the Grade 2 game so strong, they are losing out on that if they stride up. Maybe this is overblown then, but Jet is good and I fear it, plus there is Hetero around. So somewhere high anyway seems right. Now we move to Dark Irregular. This one is bad, I think, but two Protects aren't bad. Just use No Life King. Or Mystery Flare Gastil. I am afraid it will be an extraordinary undertaking to modernize the rest of Dark Irregular to rival No Life King and Gastille. We need a design team that is serious about making support cards around them, beyond just generic effects all clans are receiving. 
I agree with the other gentleman present. You don't achieve anything on turn three. This is dead in the water. Well, it is a shame we don't have any dark, irregular mains to challenge us here. So bad tier it is. Pale Moon is next. Just play Nightmare Dolls. One call from Seoul can be nice, but that is all you care about. This deck feels like worse, Gurgit, to be honest. Everything in this set is worse, Gurgit. Maybe instead of doing erratas for craze, maybe they should have eroded keyword cards to power up the weaker G bosses for the set. You know, they want to keep erratas a bit more easier to remember, though. They probably won't step beyond craze. Whatever. Anyway, Harry sucks, just like your son. I would appreciate it if you would stop involving my family. I love Harry with all my heart. He has lived an arduous life and requires a respite from the affairs of this wretched world he lives in. To return to the matter at hand, I would like to dispute the notion that Harry is an inadequate grade three. Excuse me. You have all overlooked the power that comes behind status. I would know because I am royalty. So let me elaborate. Harry has the major ability. In fact, he is one of the fewer striders that received a keyword at the start of the G series. There is a perfect guard whose use is expedited due to the skill being enabled by Clifford achieving generation break two by turn three. Furthermore, there is a G guardian which Harry has bestowed the fortune of utilizing in ways dolls cannot. This is what helps set Harry apart so significantly from his peers in the Pale Moon clan. Harry is graced with the aptitude for calling cards with disruptive abilities during the battle phase faster now. Let's just rank this as bad since dolls are much better still. All right, next is Spike Brothers. Really now, what do you even bother inviting me here for? I call Rising Nova G mid because you aren't riding V Rising Nova to go into this. That is certainly true. Sad. Rising Greedon is probably the way. Great, we have finished Dark Zone, moving on to Space Gate. Dimension Police is on hit stride is not bad, but Gallop doesn't really do anything interesting. However, it isn't a bad ride up for sure just to gain markers and draw. I agree, it is a decent ride up since you won't have Geo McGlass or Dalen or anyway. It is good to have a plus one at least prepared for losing the grade two game. Don't forget it is searchable with the motorcycle, making this a decent search target in a hybrid deck. I guess we go with mid. Mid it is, now Nova Grappler, absolute god tier. With double XL, it's not bad to use two restands in one go on those circles. But being able to activate generation break skills might take this to the next level. Novas have always been balanced down by waiting until stride to do bigger plays but now the rears can go wild with generation break skills. I agree, this is in the top tier for sure. Axels are eating good. Nova is a scary deck because of all those combos. What a mess. Okay, we are in agreement. Link Joker is quite an interesting one. The best, flipping two messiahs to speed up integral messiah and activating alter ego's spam draw skill while the opponent is on grade two, so unfair. Locking isn't meant to be that fast. How does the opponent rush them? There are more counters in 2023, and you probably can afford to hold your units back more as well. Unlike Chaos, they can't force lock from hand. What if they play Chaos Messiah? People did that years ago. That sounds like it would be a disaster, but now we have Harmonics Messiah to counter Messiah with. But you have to stride that. That sucks. Some decks are quite good with Harmonics, mainly rear guard support decks. It is quite impressive that Bushy Road's current design team may have actually considered Link Joker's change in tempo with history collection. That said, Messiah is often forced to ride up, so this buff can help them regardless. Also, I think a turn four deleter with Messiah could be good. At least Harmonix forces discards to use and slows down plays. Maybe they can move away from force two and focus on spamming force one. I think this could be high tier after all. I think that is a reasonable assessment. Okay, now we talk about Zoo Nation, Great Nature. This one is kind of bad. What is it going to achieve? At least unbanned, sheltered, Eris Spangled, so they can have some more going for it. The oppression of refugee cats in this game is quite phenomenal. Let me just say that no matter where you are from, your cards will always be welcome in the vanguard I envision. I don't know, guys. Double Axel is kind of busted still with Crayon Tiger, even if Big Belly and Wisdom Teller aren't huge. You can easily damage, deny that, Donald. I agree with the others. This is weak. Not the best Axel synergy between what we have. Neo Nectar, now this one is tricky because they unbanned Katrina. I would just play normal tokens. The on hit is good though. It is easy to multiple attacks on first stride, but you can even set up defense if you wanted while having double force. The turn four will be deadlier and they don't need to grade two game. Yeah, maybe on the high tier then. Also, God knows how much potential it opens with Bloom. Plus the on stride skill is now usable due to striding in main phase. Mega Colony, 
Now this is cracked. You can give up the grade two game and trigger dark face to mess the opponent's board. Degenerate tier, but the opponent at least gets a stride turn. The on hit isn't bad since it punishes rush and ruins the field though, since dark face hurts them already and can punish them by giving a draw. So a full field rush can sting super hard for the opponent, particularly going second where it is likelier and some people might have Axel circles. If you don't need to build a deck anymore around grade two game, it may free up slots to play other support cards too. This is so well put. I am convinced Mega Colony has some really interesting potential here. High tier it is, that now leaves Magalanica. Aqua Force. Thavis is okay, but the on hit is quite decent. If you go second, wouldn't you rather just be on Genbold? I agree with Bernie, Genbold is too good, and being forced to stride this suck just to get the Excel. Also, the Thavis ride down is quite popular, so it might be a lot of juggling. This is quite a tough one. Maybe we leave it in mid. I really don't know what to make of this. Grand Blue, okay, this one is very good. Hold on before we continue. King Charles, we haven't heard you speak for a while. I wanted to just ask if you have any input you would like to add. Do feel free to stop us if we move too fast. My opinion doesn't matter. It never did. It is the role of a king in modern society to remain apolitical. This discussion was a harsh reminder of that. That's deep, Your Majesty. I'm sorry about earlier. That was uncalled for on my account. Sometimes these debates get a little heated and we lose control of our own manners. I suppose I will give this another attempt. Regarding Grand Blue, this one is in a similar situation to Harry. It benefits from its own characteristics and can be used with specific guardians. Two protects and a solid multi-attack play just like with V Night Rose, but with an inbuilt Beatrice Cannoneer combo, this means you won't need Beatrice anymore and you can use Negro Lily with one of your Cannoneers that you draw into. Also, you can mill three while using this. This looks really good if you ask me. This uses an extra counter blast. I don't know about this. Then just counter charge more forehead. You can play a lot of counter charges in this. Even the effect heals are more playable again with the new errata and harmonics giving the 20k shield going second. Forehead, go to sleep, Sleepy Joe. You belong with the ghosties right now. Your new name is Joe the Ghosty. Haha, <laughs> very funny, Donald. Now, now, let's be civil here. We still have one more clan to go through with Bermuda Triangle. For now, I am placing Grand Blue at the top. This one is quite interesting. Loris finally getting support again is a dream come true. Her time has come, as did mine with the coronation. I waited 1,000 years for this. You really are a ghosty, Joe. God damn it. All right, so I don't know what to make of this. The draw and bounce ability looks handy, I suppose, but you got the multi-attack stride, too. It is quite mid here. Two force markers is very fine, too. But if anything, I think its strength lies in enabling generation break skills, which Reindeer cannot do as well as setting up for Megiddo to be a powerful finisher on turn four. Doesn't sound too bad when you put it that way. Also, the GB2 is very playable and helps with powering up on the opponent's turn. To be honest, when Reindeer exists, I don't think I would bother building a deck around this in 2023. I'm not sure if they even have any crazy generation break rears. Reindeer can gain three markers, but also have the option to ride down. Couldn't we also just mix Loris with Shandy, who doesn't share a name with Sedna, luckily, to play this in Reindeer? Bernie, that is a stupid idea, you socialists always coming up with these pie-in-the-sky fantasies. Next, you will be saying that we can play unicorns in this deck. I don't need to take shit coming from a pathological liar and one of the worst presidents of my lifetime. And let me tell you something. I lived a pretty long life, just like the two of you. I don't think Bernie's idea is bad. Sometimes you just can't draw reindeer, or there isn't any point going for ride down, in which case the play wouldn't even be that bad. You still get four attacks at least. Also, you have a draw ability and get to activate a bounce, which can help Sistico or something. Nobody was asking you, Joe the Ghosty. You couldn't play Bermuda to save your life, just like the time you sung with Rosalia, and couldn't keep in sync with the song because you were so sleepy you would be a bad fit in a Bermuda concert. Let me tell you. Donald, I am going to get back at you for activating a flashback. I activate stun versus skill. Now you can't be called from the drop zone. Sorry, what were you saying? That's enough. I don't have the patience for this. 
Donald, you are a fraud. I am leaving. Next time, Barack, don't invite a charlatan to this series. Your Majesty, I do hope we have an opportunity to work together under better circumstances. Well done, Donald. We lost Bernie. Are you proud? He was a grumpy old grandpa. Why can't he just sit here and enjoy me taking blows at Joe the Ghosty? Well, now he is gone. Maybe I will call him Bernie the Ghosty. Not to stir the pot, but Bernie is already a ghosty. No way. That is so hilarious. I cannot stomach quite more of this uncouth behavior. I will be departing now. Farewell. We are done then. Well, thank you everyone for sticking around. Sorry it went so deep off the rails. I don't know if we will have Bernie on again. Maybe we can do some Bernie collabs without Donald in them. They can't get along. Maybe, but only rude personalities get attention and love. The clickbait industry is too strong for me to give a kind soul like Bernie the priority. Though I am wondering how King Charles found it. He loved it. No, he fucking didn't. He wasn't enjoying it. We need to work on our behavior if we want to invite people like that on. I do like having some drama. Drama brings clicks and views, but we do need the guests. Finding the balance is quite a challenge. That tier list was so bad thanks to my sabotage, I managed to hide my spice and fool the world into thinking Fenrir sucks. But I plan to stage my comeback very soon.